Hi, I'm Gary Pierce, KN4AQ. And I'm Jeff Wittick, AC4ZO. And we are proud, relieved, to introduce the Dayton Collection for 2009. That's a three DVD set of all the footage we shot at this year's Dayton Hamvention. And last year's Hamvention that you never edited. It was worth the wait. And that's why we're relieved. You're not helping. Are you gonna show some of the parts that I'm in? In a minute, but I'm gonna work backward here and start with DVD three. That's got all the D-Star stuff on it, the Friday afternoon forum and the Friday night event. It's got information and updates from many of the leaders in this new technology. So let's start with a look at that. Welcome everyone to the D-Star Forum. Thanks for coming, my name is Greg Surratt. And today we got some, uh, some of the best D-Star experts in the field. Just about any image you can come across in any form is going to be too large to send over 1200 baud. If you try to send an image to someone, it will pop up this little box and allow you to drag that quality slider left and right until the happy medium of a small file and a reasonable uh, amount of resolution shows up down there. In D-Star, though, one of the things to, uh, to learn, to get used to, is your calls are routed by destination. You tell your voice packets where you want them to go, and they go there. This shows a spectrum analyzer shot of on top the bandwidth of an FM signal and down below the occupied bandwidth of a D-Star signal. Uh, this is a, a prototype, and it's a transmitter. You've got an HT, a D-Star HT at the house, and you walk around the house and you can hear what's going on, what you're linked into. We really want to get the receive portion in it as well so you can have a little hotspot. I'll give you a quick State of the Union address, so to speak, from the D-Star world. The primary customer for this um, was the Minnesota Department of Health. And by the way, if you want to meet with a group in ham, you know, who, who likes ham radio, who understands ham radio, and doesn't have this whole sort of, you know, gee, are you guys carrying radios? Are you police and fire wannabes? You know, no one is an epidemiologist wannabe, right? So last week, we did have a trust server problem. So it's now 1130 at night. Um, there's a little problem at the data center. <laughs> There are no bathrooms in the data center. We've heard the, the stories about the new 880s and the new 80s with the CQ, CQ, CQ problem. What we decided to do, among several of us that got 80s, is that we do slash DR space CQ. DVD2 is total geek city. It's got the Tapper Forum and the Software Defined Radio Forum. Gary, did you know there's more than one way to do Software Defined Radio? I didn't, but I do now. The guys from Flex, Elecraft, and HPSDR all show their particular ways to do, Jeff, say it with me, the, the future, future of, of amateur, amateur radio. radio. Good afternoon, everybody. This is the Software Defined Radio Forum. I'm Bob, N4HY, your moderator. Our, our goal is to, to produce a high-speed broadband digital system uh, in the microwave bands. I'd also like to contrast the difference between a software-defined radio and a firmware-defined radio. An SDR does not have to be PC-based. The device on which the software runs, the processor, can be embedded. This is what, this is what we're going to talk about right now. This is the board set and the back plane. We also have these on display, a couple stations. You can actually make a QSO between two stations we have set up at the Tapper booth. Software-defined radios offer flexibility beyond imagination in what you can do. And, and what I'm going to tell you is how I've actually used these at my station. And CQ Magazine announces a new extreme contest category so you can really put advanced technology to work. For example? For example, how about a station with receivers and antennas all over the world? My first thought was you're going to limit the amount of receiving antennas. I mean, if I scatter receiving antennas all over the world and they're all tied via the internet, I mean, that just doesn't seem reasonable to me. Why are you allowing that? I mean, I know you have a limit on the transmitter, so you can only transmit from one location. Right. Uh, it, it, was that your weighing factor in allowing receiving antennas anywhere in the world? Well, DVD-1 is also jam-packed. With my program, right? Hold on. First, it's got two FCC forums on it. The one from 2008. That you never got around to editing. That's got Bill Cross, W3TN, and Riley Hollingsworth, K4ZDH. And this was Riley's last Dayton before he retired. As you know, Riley was thinking about retiring last year. <laughs> and in a moment of weakness, he scared you all to death. <laughs> what you don't know is that I had been privileged to these thoughts of delusional insanity. <laughs> and we had a number of conversations about this very, very poor idea. 
I noticed no difference whatsoever in the enforcement problems uh, related to no code. And I think I'm seeing more young people at the events that I go to. And I noticed this fellow sitting right here and your licensee, I hope otherwise I've stood up here and made a fool of myself, but I'm, I'm gambling. I'm gambling this W2 CVZ. And when did you get your license? Three years ago. Three years ago. And how old are you? Twelve. If I'd been that smart at this age, I never would have gone with the government. <laughs> future president of the league might be sitting right there. And we've got this year's FCC forum. How about that? This year's forum available this year. It's also got Bill Cross. We've always got Bill. I realized this morning that this is my 19th year here at Dayton. And it introduces Laura Smith, the new special counsel for amateur radio enforcement. The new scare. Please do not ever call me the scare. Sorry. I want to say I was really impressed with her. Yeah, me too. There has been quite a lot of speculation about me. A lot of rumors. Uh, you guys, I have to admit, you guys uh, gossip more than a group of 15-year-old girls. Uh, I, I've never seen anything quite like it. Uh, so I thought the best way to do this today was to give you a little bit of an introduction to me, who I am and what I'm about. The best way to tell you who I am and what I am about is to tell you a couple of stories. They're not stories about me, by the way. Uh, they are stories, however, about the person who has had and still does have the most influence on me in my life. That's my dad. And yes, the uh, internet rumors are true. My father is a retired police officer. He spent 45 years carrying a gun and a badge. Uh, and, and during that time, he, he did manage to raise four children and teach us some values. DVD One also has my the program, The Tour. I was going to say the DVD-1 has the ARRL forum with League President Joel Harrison, W5ZN, and CEO Dave Sumner, K1ZZ. Dave talks about the FCC staff reports that contradict the Commission's conclusions on just how much interference BPL might cause. The staff saw trouble, but the Commission pretty much ignored it. The ARRL has been trying to get those reports for years. They even went to court but the FCC would only release copies that had the negative staff information redacted. Redacted? Uh, snipped out, covered up, uh, deleted, obliterated. I got it. Censored. I got it. Well, the League got the unredacted report this year. It's eye-opening. And I think it's so important, I put Dave's whole discussion on YouTube. For free? For free. You're giving away the store. I said it was important. You can see the whole thing on our website, arvideonews.com, or on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash kn4aq. What else have you got? Last but not least is the 2009 unauthorized Hamvention tour. Finally. Wait, unauthorized? Well, they didn't say we could do it, but they didn't say we couldn't. Good, because that's my favorite part. Because it makes you a star. Because it shows people a lot of the cool stuff that goes on. Well, we did see a lot, like that guy with the two kilowatt backpack. I put that bit on YouTube, too, and last time I looked, it was at about 6,000 hits. We saw so much stuff, I couldn't squeeze it all into a 40-minute program. So make it longer. Well, the tour is designed to be played at radio club meetings. Ah, and the brain can absorb only what the butt can endure. For most hams, that's about 40 minutes. That's right. So where's the rest of it? Well, I was going to play it right here, but yeah, I don't think we've got time. Make time. Hmm. YouTube only gives me 10 minutes. How about we make a separate segment with just the tour overflow? I suppose. Where can people see it? Well, that's the tricky part. If you're watching this on the ARVN website, then there's going to be a box right down there someplace. But if you're watching on YouTube or someplace else on the web, you might have to hunt a bit. Maybe the easiest thing is to just go to the arvideonews.com website. That sounds too complicated. OK, here's some incentive. My goodness, will you take a look at this? If we're looking for geeks, gadgets, and gear, we have hit the mother load. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you doing? Okay. Is your car? Yep. My name's Tom. It, uh, I'm WA0KGU. Okay, thanks, Tom. It's, uh, you, you don't see many cars like this. No, you sure don't. It stopped. Well, I've got to sell something. Then you can go watch the rest. Hurry up. The DVDs are 15 bucks each, plus a couple of bucks for the post office. And you can order them right on our website. That's arvideonews.com. And on the website, you'll also see our other programs like Digital Voice for Amateur Radio, 
ARDF, that's the Fox Hunt Championship, Standing Up for Standing Waves. And hey, Jeff, here's you on the cover of the Dayton 2007 tour. That's back when you were the Dayton Virgin. Some of those DVDs make pretty good club meeting programs. They meet the 40-minute butt rule. And they're interesting and informative? The ones with me in them are. Then it's time to watch plenty of you. Just hunt up the ARVN YouTube Extra from the 2009 Dayton Hamvention. And if you like that, you can buy the DVD. That's crass.